Hey folks, welcome to another Passion for Sound audio review. And today we're taking a look at a pair of active monitors sent to me by Edifier. These are the Edifier MR4s. They're a fairly basic active monitor. And what I mean by that is that unlike some of the other Edifier models, they don't have Bluetooth or extra inputs. They're just a simple analog input, internal amplification, active studio monitor type design. As I said before, these were sent to me by Edifier, so I want to say a huge thanks to them. But as is always the case, the fact that they've sent them to me for review doesn't influence what I'm going to say. I've previously reviewed other Edifier speakers here on the channel, and I really liked those. So when Edifier offered to send me the MR4s, I was very interested. But given their cheaper price at only $130 US dollars, and the fact that they're a very simple design with just a 4-inch and a 1-inch driver, I wasn't really sure what to expect. So come with me now as I tell you what I discovered. Peeling back the layers of the part I've been playing for you Used to be so easy Now I get queasy When things start going This life we all know that the starting is the hardest part do you believe me or even as i've already mentioned the mr4s here come in at just 130 us dollars making them very very affordable for a pair of studio monitor or bookshelf style speakers the MR4s use a two-way design with a 4-inch woofer and a 1-inch silk dome tweeter. They've got a port at the rear. So they've got a rear firing port and that does mean you need to be a little bit careful placing these two close to the wall so you don't get too much reflection off the wall. And the frequency response of these is 60 hertz at the bottom end all the way up to 20 kilohertz. So they're not going to give you deep thumping bass and we will talk about that soon. But they're also not too bad either. You might have seen while I was holding these that they've got a pair of speaker terminals here, just the spring-loaded terminals. And what that tells you is that these are a unilateral amping setup. What I mean by that is that if we look at the other speaker here, this is really the active one. So on the back of this one, this is where all the controls are, this is where your input goes in, and where the signal comes out to go off to the left-hand speaker. I'm not really a fan of unilateral amping. On one hand, it means you don't need two different power points, but on the other hand, it also means you have to run speaker wire from this one to the other. For a studio monitor setup, I much prefer each of the speakers to have their very own power supply and potentially their very own controls for things like tone, because you might have one closer to a corner and the other further away, and therefore need to adjust their tonality a little bit differently. But again, at $130, US I might be asking too much for the MR4s. While I've got this guy here in my hands, the other things I want to mention are that we've got tone controls here on the back, so you can boost or cut the treble on the bass by 6dB in each direction, We've also got a pair of RCA single ended inputs and also some TRS balanced inputs. There's no way as I understand it to switch the inputs on here, so this doesn't mean that you can plug in two different inputs and flick between them. You're going to need to choose between the single ended or the balanced inputs and then just go with that for a single input to the speakers. Flipping around to the front of this one, and on the front here, we've got some basic control and also we've got a couple of extra inputs and outputs. So the MR4 is a design where you can run an auxiliary line in with a 3.5mm connection. So if you've got a smartphone or some other source that you want to fire into this one, you don't have to go to the back of the device. And then you can also run a pair of headphones out of this. So if you wanted to set up on your desk, for instance, let's say you've got a really small desktop style, near field mixing, monitoring, production type setup, you might want to have these as kind of your only source of sound. But then if you want to occasionally plug in a pair of headphones to hear your mix through headphones, or maybe when you need to be quiet and can't be using speakers, then you could actually just have these on your desk and plug directly into the headphone output there. The headphone output's not going to set the world on fire, and I'm not going to spend too much time on that one, but it's a nice extra feature to have if you need it. The other thing I want to talk about on the front panel is the control knob here. This is going to let you do a few things. First of all, it's going to allow you to turn the device on and off, so there's a long press to switch it on and off. It's also your volume control, so you can either set that to maximum and then control the volume from your source device, or you can actually use this as your volume control. So you'd do that, for instance, if you've got a fixed line output from whatever your source is, let's say it's a DAC without preamp controls, then you'd use this as your main volume. But if you do have variable volume, either through your software or maybe through your other hardware, then you might choose to just fix this in a single spot. It is worth noting that when I had the dial in the full volume position and was using my various source devices to control the volume, there was a small amount of hiss constantly coming out of the MR4s. It wasn't enough that I could hear it from where I was sitting, which is probably about 
1.2 meters away just looking at it now. So it's not like I could hear it when I was sitting at my desk, but if they had been a really near field setup side by side with my monitor, I probably would have heard the hiss. So do be aware of that. It also tells you that these don't have an auto power off. So when they're on, they're staying on all the time. And that's probably not so good from a power consumption point of view either. So they're really going to be ideal in a situation where you can reach the volume knob, you can turn them up and down as you need to, and you can switch them off when you're not using them. But it's not to say they can't be used the other way, how I had them, it's just not as ideal. The final thing that's worth mentioning is that the control knob here, with a short press when they're switched on, will also flick between two different sound modes. So Edifier have set these up to have a monitor style sound, and what they call a music style sound. The idea being that the monitoring style sound is as neutral as possible, and the music style sound is going to have a little bit of colour added to it for musical enjoyment. As it happens though, when I flick between the two options, I actually don't really like the music style sound. I feel like it was pushing the upper mid range a bit too forward, it was almost making the sound a bit more forceful, and I found myself consistently enjoying them much more in the monitoring style setup. And that's actually a good thing in my opinion. What it means is that whilst that function becomes redundant, it means that you can use these for monitoring, but also for music listening without having to press that button. Of course, if you're getting a pair of these and you're looking at them just for music listening, then you can try both modes and see what suits your preferences, but also the room that you're in. Because we do need to take that into account. I've got a relatively small office here that's got a bit of sound treatment, but it's a largely untreated room, and therefore it could be quite different if you put these in a closer near field setup than mine. As I said before, they're probably about 1.2 meters away from me, and so if you have them even closer and or in a different room, you might get slightly different experiences. The music mode wasn't bad, I should stress that, but I just preferred and found it more relaxing to listen to them in monitor mode. And so let's talk now about what I was hearing when I used them. Trying to work out what gear you should buy next? Have a look at the Passion for Sound Recommends link down in the description below. Clicking on the link will take you through to my Patreon page and specifically a post where you can click on the Airtable image to go through to my recommended product database. Once you're in the database, you can use the filter button up the top to choose which sorts of product types you want to have a look at. Maybe headphones, maybe DACs, maybe amps. Choose the one or ones that you want to see from this list. And then you can also sort the list by price if you want to, or other features as well. You'll then see a consolidated list just of the product types you want to have a look at, including things like what the retail price was when I last checked. You've got links to my reviews of each product, and then also links to where you can go and buy them. Feel free to play around with the filters and sorting options as much as you like to find the gear you're looking for, and I hope that this database points you in just the right direction for you. So happy hunting, happy listening, and now let's get back to the review. I've been using the MR4s for a number of weeks now, both as an editing tool when I've been editing videos, but also just for listening to music from time to time. And they're a solid option. They're not a bad speaker at all. I think they kind of perform to their price. They haven't wowed me or kind of excited me, but for what they do, they do it just fine. And what I mean by that is that in an editing type setup, they're giving a good sense of kind of neutral tonality. I felt like I was consistently hearing the truth about the sound when I was editing my videos. My voice sounded correct in the MR4s when comparing to my more expensive KRKG5s and also to my various headphone setups. And so I think they're giving a nice, honest representation of the sound. If I had to get picky, there's probably a slight sense of kind of upper mid-range emphasis from these compared to something like the G5s, but it's not enough that it would ever throw off my understanding of what I was listening to. It's more just a touch of tonal character rather than significant coloration. The amount of volume they deliver is excellent. You can get more than enough volume in a near-field setup, even a slightly larger than near-field setup. And probably the thing that stood out to me the most is they do provide an excellent sense of imaging. They're not great if you get a little bit off axis, but that's really not what monitors are designed for. And so whenever I was sitting in this sweet spot with an equilateral triangle between me and each of the monitors, the end result was a crystal clear image dead center and a generally neutral tonality. As I've already alluded to, the base extension of these is modest at best. They're quoted as only going down to 60 hertz, and they definitely sound like they only go down to 60 hertz. Maybe even a little bit less. Again, that's partly going to come down to the room characteristics, positioning between you and the speaker, all those sorts of factors. You can, of course, use the tone controls to lift the bass a little bit and give them a bit of extra body, and I did actually play with that. Adding a couple of dB in the bass did provide a bit of extra sense of depth and extension from them without going too far and overcoloring the sound. Of course, you can go all the way to 6 dB if that's what you want, but the nice thing is you can tweak it just a little bit for the room without having to take it too far or it coloring the sound too heavily. And so at this point in my usage, I was finding that the MR4s were a good, solid, budget, studio monitor type setup. I think most people would be very happy with a pair of these on your desk or on a pair of stands, fairly close to you, 
For any kind of mixing, movie watching, gaming, that sort of setup around a computer, I think they're just fine, and good even. Comparing the MR4s to my much more expensive KRK Rocket 5 G4s, I think I called them the G5s before, but it's the 5 inch generation 4 model of the KRKs, what I found was that the KRKs were delivering more nuance in the sound, the bass extension was better, I could hear more fine details in the mix, and I think the tonality was a bit more accurate because you can tweak the sound of the individual speakers with the KRKs. And so I definitely heard what you're getting when you spend more money, but by no means did it make the MR4s sound like they were inaccurate or misleading in any way. And so I think that sets up the value of the MR4s pretty solidly. For the price you're paying, you're getting a solid pair of mostly neutral monitors that aren't the last word in resolution, but at the price are pretty solid. And they're a speaker that's also enjoyable if you want to listen to some music, watch a movie or play games. The imaging, as I said before, is very solid, so you can get that really nice pinpoint image for your mixing and your mastering type setups. And whilst I'm not suggesting that these are in any way at the level of pro-grade studio monitors, for someone starting out or just looking for something better than your average PC monitors, I think the Edify MR4s are really solid. As I said before, if you are looking at these for music listening, or as I said before, even in your monitoring system, if you feel like they need a bit more bottom end, you've got the tone controls there where you can tweak the sound to be quite an enjoyable and engaging sound. They're not as enjoyable as something like the Edifier R1280dBs that I reviewed some time ago, but those are designed more as a music speaker, whereas these are designed more as a studio monitor that can do music. And in that sense, I do think these are a good choice. I do think there's better out there if you're happy to spend a bit more money. I think if you are looking for a music speaker, maybe check out the 1280s from Edifier. But if you're looking for something that's both a studio monitor and a speaker, I think the MR4s might be just that bit more accurate and a bit more neutral than the 1280s. So it depends on what your priorities and your preferences are, but I would be very happy using these as my one and only studio monitors for my editing of videos. I would maybe look a little bit higher in price if I wanted to do serious mixing and mastering of music, but for video editing, for podcast editing, for general multimedia usage, I think the MR4s are a really solid option. At $130, US it's pretty hard to go wrong. And by the way, they look and they feel great too. They're a wooden cabinet. They've got these lovely kind of plastic, but in a nice quality plastic way fronts. And they're a nice compact speaker. So if you're in the market for a budget active monitor, then I do think the MR4s are worth considering, particularly if you're limited on budget. And so I'll go hunting around and find a few links to pop down below where you can check them out if you want to. As always, I hope you found the review useful and helpful. Hopefully I've answered any questions you've got about the MR4s. And of course, feel free to pop any additional questions down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. If you have found the review useful and helpful, I'd love it if you hit the like button and consider subscribing and ring the notification bell if you haven't already. But for now, let me leave it to the music. So happy listening and I'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound.